what you're seeing with the blow ups in crypto, if you're a long time Bitcoin bull, you actually should be really liking it. And I'll tell you why, because the, these type of bubble blow ups get rid of the nonsense. They get rid of the bad business models. They leave standing the long term winners, you know, pets.com gone, right? <laughs> I mean, that that's, that's the thing. And yes, you know, the, I go back to 200% market cap to GDP. People, you got to at some point have an economy that produces something to back up these valuations. You can't be living in La La Land forever. Bitcoin has retreated a long way from its all-time high of $68,789 reached in November 2021. Market observers have had to recalibrate their expectations, many having predicted that the coin was on its way to $100,000. Given Bitcoin's inflationary nature, it became popular among retail investors as a form of digital gold. It was viewed as a safe haven asset offering portfolio diversification and a hedge against falling prices for other financial assets, such as stocks and bonds, especially after markets crash in response to the COVID-19 pandemic. But as more investors have entered the market and involvement from institutional investors has grown, Bitcoin has become more correlated to stock markets. Bitcoin rallied above $64,000 in mid-April 2021, leading a rally across the growing number of altcoins or alternative cryptocurrencies. But profit-taking gave way to a new bear market at the end of 2021, with Bitcoin trading down to $46,000 at the end of December 2021. Bitcoin briefly traded above $31,000 heading into June as the market digested the Terra collapse, but another rapid sell-off brought the price down to $17,708 on 18 June. The price has since bounced above $20,000. A former outspoken Bitcoin critic who flipped bullish on Bitcoin after conversations with Michael Saylor, Sven Henrich, has shared his latest bullish predictions for Bitcoin. Sven Henrich is founder and the lead market strategist for Northman Trader and a highly respected technical analyst and commentator about markets and the macroeconomic environment and is a frequent contributor to CNBC, CNN Business, and to MarketWatch. Before we listen to him, please don't forget to smash the like button and consider subscribing to the channel if you are yet to do so. Thanks for watching our videos. By the way, Michael Sale and I spoke literally at the bottom, right? And we had this podcast. It was the, the Friday. Uh, Bitcoin was trading at 20. I talked to him about this long-term trend chart I had. And I said, risk is to 17,000. As long as it holds, the long-term trend is up. It's fine. Guess what? We bought him 17,500 and rallied back up along with with equity markets so that's maybe the good news the long-term trend is holding <clears throat> the bad news maybe is that the correlation between bitcoin and the s p it's almost 90 percent all right in, in fact it's gotten so close that on the weekends i already can tell where the u.s market's going to open you know if bitcoin rallies over the the weekend i know future's going to be up on sunday and, and vice versa if it drops it's, it's not going to be i mean it it is that closely correlated, and as long as we don't have the clarity on regulation, I think this is just going to continue to be that way. Call it a 5x ETF on, on the market at, at, at the moment. Okay, So if you take them to view, maybe the market's at bottom this year, then that's all good news for, for Bitcoin, right? As long as the correlation is that tight. Um, problem is, if we do get a rollover, uh, in, in this is a bear market, extended bear market rally, then I would expect the long-term trend to crack. And I, I got this chart, you know, it, it, it could be ugly, right? I mean, I'm not predicting anything like here, but on that structural chart, I, I can I can point to 5,000 or below, which, you know, sounds horrific. Not, again, I'm not predicting it, but technically that's what I see if that trend breaks as a possibility. And it, wow. it, it just puts you back in the range. It would just put you back in the in the range over the last few years. You know, my my bullish case on Bitcoin has simply been at the beginning of the year. Yeah, we're in the bear market. Uh, it's going to get whacked. I'm going to be patient. I'm not using this as a trade. This is not Northman Trader. This is now Northman Investor. I'm going to be patiently scaling in and on weakness and key points, uh, recognizing what the risks are. I have a ten year time horizon. You know, this is this is my Amazon Apple. 80 90 percent drawdown year 2000 2002 kind of scenario i don't care where it's at at the moment i'm just gonna keep observing the larger macro environment where bitcoin is actually being picked up by institutions as we saw this week right 
the regulation is coming uh, and the adoption is going to continue to improve over time. Mm -hmm. uh, and once you have the regulatory hurdles, uh, then I think you're going to get more institutional adoption. But in the meantime, you're going to get the same ridicule that you saw in, in 2000 when, when Amazon blew up and everybody was laughing at, you know, at Bezos and, you know, we'll look what happened there ultimately, you know, and then, so when you see Tesla taking a big write off, um, <laughs> that you, you're going to get those type, type of headlines, obviously, but yeah, it's, it's, it's all correlated. Uh, and we don't know whether we're still in a bear market rally now that will roll over. Or we whether we've made the low now for this year anyway, and, and see a massive year and rally. I will offer one caveat: to the extent that in our extraordinary times, uh, seasonality applies. Um, there's something called midterm seasonality. Yes, every election type of background has also seasonality associated with it, and midterms are coming up in November. And typically, what you see in midterms, and it's not been tracking perfectly at all this year because it, it this first year was this first half of the year was definitely extraordinary but it correctly predicted weakness in the first half of the year it predicted multiple rallies that coincided with that midterm seasonality chart in the s p it the, that midterm seasonality chart says more stress into september october which may or may not produce lows i'm i'm, I'm looking at this at you know, technically, I see also bullish patterns if we do drop from here a bit, but it then predicts a massive year-end rally, starting basically around, you know, the, the September October pivot point. I know a lot of people are looking at this as well. Okay, so and I said this on Twitter the other day too. You know, bears need to prove their case here. They need to produce new lows because July the bad news didn't matter anymore, right? Why? Not because it's priced in, because everybody's expecting that Fed pivot. Yeah. Right? Or they're sniffing out maybe the peaking of inflation. Right. And so that that's that's why I think the September will be so fantastic. Because in again, 2000, we peaked with a bear market rally and then everything fell apart. In other cases, seasonality took over and, and we just rallied into year end. I wish I could give you with definitive. Uh, reason a a a very clear prediction, but I'm I'm gonna stay open minded and we just adjust as as things progress. Yeah. For now, at this very moment, you know, we we were very bullish from mid June to 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 this week. We started scaling out of longs. Now we're kind of we still have longs, but we're kind of dabbling on tactical shorts because there are issues with this rally. One is is just one open gap after another. So I think has some work to do to the downside at some point but risk remains higher uh, as long as you don't see a significant rollover what are you seeing with the blow up some crypto if you're a long time bitcoin bull you actually should be really liking it and i'll tell you why because the these type of bubble blow ups get rid of the nonsense they get rid of the bad business models they leave standing the long term winners you know, pets.com gone, right? <laughs> I mean, that that's that's the thing. And yes, you know, the, I go back to 200% market cap to GDP. People, you got to at some point have an economy that produces something to back up these valuations. You can't be living in la-la land forever. And that's, that's what I kept warning about last year, right? Even with Bitcoin at the time, because, you know, I had I had my little journey. You know, and I, I certainly wasn't chasing all this stuff into, you know, 50, 60, 70,000. You know, that's why I'm looking at it from a long term perspective. And I was like, yeah, give, give me weakness. Bring it. Have things blow up. Give me give me better prices. I'm all for it, you know, but I'm not doing this for get rich quick scheme is it is that's what you call it, right? Huh? Get rich quick. Don't get yeah, poor that... slowly, faster and faster. Well, what happens is people are getting poor quickly because they over levered themselves. You know, that this is the problem. Every generation forgets, you know, that bubbles blow up, you know, and everybody thinks everybody's a genius. You know, you, if, you, if you make 50, 60, 70% on a trade or 1,000% on an option trade, that's great. 
But that's the most dangerous thing to happen. See, a lot of people came into trading fresh last year, right? The most dangerous thing, seriously, and this happened to me too, you know, I was young once too, you know. Um, the most dangerous thing that can happen to you as a new trader is you start trading and you make a bunch of fucking money because you think you're a freaking genius. No, <laughs> you're just in a particular market phase where everything works, you know, and, 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 and after it works, that's when people get cocky and they say, wow, well, I'm going to sell this to buy more of that. You know, I'm going to live on my house so I can get rich quicker, faster, yep. richer. And that's when people blow themselves up. Sorry. You know, you just, re there's, there's nothing special about that time. It's just you're repeating the next cycle. What do you make of Sven Henrik interview? Do you believe we are going to see a massive Bitcoin rally in September? Please let us know your opinion in the comments section. Thanks for watching.